Welcome back to season two of Archival Discoveries, where we find documents in the museum and learn something new about Brantford's history. My name is Cassandra, and I am currently interning at the Brant Museum and Archives. I help digitize document boxes like this one here. I help ensure that each box is organized in an accessible way. Every item in these boxes has an accession number. Each item is placed in numerical order within their envelope, and then each envelope is put in alphabetical order within its designated box. I then scan the documents and input the information into a finding aid to assist anyone researching these documents at a later date. I have been given this amazing opportunity to host this week's episode of Archival Discoveries and to show you all what I've been working on. This week, we are looking at the beginnings of the Brantford Fire Department. Let's start off by taking a look at each of the envelopes. In total, there are seven envelopes in this document box pertaining to the Brantford Fire Department. For the purpose of this video, we are focusing on three of those envelopes. Let's look at the contents of our first envelope. In the first envelope, we have three printed photos and a ledger page. The first photo is of John McCann, the first Brantford fire chief appointed in 1875. As the inscription below indicates, McCann was succeeded by George D. Calder, when the full-time fire department replaced the volunteer force in 1889. The next picture is of a steam pump used by the Brantford Fire Department. On the back of the photo, we see the date 1880 written. This steam pump was an 1880 model and would have been lugged around by those putting out fires, using steam to propel water from the hoses and onto the fire. The fire pumper used to be outside fire hall number three, and was on display outside the blind school in the 1980s before being moved back to the museum. Last year, the fire pump was restored and now sits in New Fire Hall on Fairview Drive with an exhibit of Brantford's fire history. Fires of Brantford is an online exhibit that can be viewed by visiting the museum's website and 1912 will be added to this page in the coming months. The last photo in this envelope is of the members of the Victoria Hook and Ladder Company. Before there was an established fire department, Brantford's fire force was compiled of several individual companies. The Victoria Hook and Ladder Company was one of the original firefighting companies that later amalgamated into the United Fire Brigade in 1857. John McCann, the man that was in the first photo, was the treasurer of the Victoria Hook and Ladder Company in 1866. The final item in our first envelope is this ledger page from June 1st, 1884. The page is titled Grand Fireman's Tournament to be held in the city of Brantford and below the writing are signed names. Time to look at envelope number two. We are jumping a bit ahead in time here from the first envelope. Here we have two certificates, both are for D.J. Lewis, but they have different dates. D.J. Lewis took over as fire chief after the death of George Calder. Lewis started out as a driver, then moved to assistant foreman, and was in the position of foreman when he became fire chief. The Dominion Association of Fire Chiefs started roughly in 1909 but was not called the Dominion Association of Fire Chiefs until 1915. This is a Canadian-wide nonprofit organization with voluntary members representing approximately 3,500 fire departments across Canada. It is a place where members of the firefighting community come together in efforts to advance public and firefighter safety. In 1954, the name changed to the Canadian Association of Fire Chiefs. This first certificate is from 1915, just at the beginning of the association receiving its name. It also indicates that Lewis has been a member of the Provincial Association of Fire Chiefs from October 1910 to August 1915. The second certificate is from July 27, 1938, and recognizes Lewis as a life member of the Dominion Association of Fire Chiefs. Our third envelope has quite a few things in it. Here we have three different bylaw booklets and two voting tallies from the 1888 fire chief election. Let's look at the bylaw booklets first. This first one was created by the Victoria Hook and Ladder Company. 
As we can see by the lines and disappearing cover, this book is quite old. It is from 1866. Flipping through some of the pages, we see that the motto of the Victoria Hook and Ladder Company was ever ready, day or night. Flipping again, we see that this particular book belonged to Daniel Hunting since June 7, 1871. McCann was the captain and McLean was the secretary. This book also has the constitution by which the Victoria Hook and Ladder Company complied. It states that the company must consist of 50 members or more, titles that each officer would receive, and what the captain's duties included. At the very end of this book, also included, is the order of business. These were the rules of how meetings should be conducted, such as roll call, minutes of previous meetings to be discussed, delinquents to show cause, collection of fines and dues, and reception of communications are a few actions that are listed. The second book is by the Brant Hose Company. If we flip it open, we see that it was adopted January 1st, 1871. This book belonged to Robert Armstrong since January 3rd, 1872. We can also see here that the company started with 25 members, but in this book, that number has been scratched to 50 members. The Constitution goes on to list the duties of each importantly titled person, such as the lieutenant, secretary, and treasurer. It states here that the duties of the lieutenant shall be to aid the captain in the discharge of his several duties, amongst other things. The secretary duties include calling the roll of the company at all meetings, after every fire or alarm of fire, and to keep a correct account thereof, to notify each member of all special and regular meetings, and to aid and assist the captain and lieutenant in their several duties. As for the treasurer, it was their duty to receive all monies paid into his hands by the secretary and give his receipt therefore. He shall pay all bills against the company and out of any money on hand not otherwise appropriated. The third booklet is by the Brantford Fire Brigade. The front cover tells us that the bylaws were adopted February 14, 1873, and the brigade was organized January 14, 1873. Inside, we see that this book was printed at the Courier Steam Printing House in Brantford. This book is shorter than the others, but also contains an order of business section that states what happens when the chief or chairman has taken the chair and called a meeting to order. Marlett was the brigade secretary at the time, and John McCann was the fire engineer. The last thing that we are looking at today is this record of vote for the fire chief taken on March 7, 1888. This paper shows that McCann had 36 votes and Calder had 34 votes. Well, we learned quite a bit today about the beginnings of the Brantford Fire Department. We learned that prior to having a fire department, there were a bunch of different individual organizations that put fires out around Brantford. We learned who the first fire chief was. We also learned that DJ Lewis, another fire chief, was recognized as a lifelong member of the Dominion Association of Fire Chiefs. We saw three different bylaw booklets, one from the Victoria Hook and Ladder Company, the Brant Hose Company, and the Brantford Fire Brigade, all dictating what the courses of action for each of those organizations were. And lastly, we learned that the fire chief of 1888 was in fact elected for. So join us next week on Archival Discoveries for Megan's episode.